My name is Mariam Sayyidabisi. I have three children. My name is Aisha, Khalid, Khalid and Fatima. I'd like the Australian government to know that we're actually broken. Okay, we're shattered. We are broken people. So, how did you end up here? A long story short, basically I was tricked into coming to Syria with my, by my husband. How did that happen? It started off as a normal holiday. Um, my husband actually never had ne my husband had never left the country at the time, so it was the first time he had agreed to take me overseas. So we had a really nice holiday planned. We went uh, to Malaysia, took me to Dubai, we went to Lebanon. There was um, other people there and there was, there was a man there. I just remember the man. And he started telling us, run before they shoot, run before they start shooting. And we didn't know what was going on. And this is all maybe in a space of, of one minute, this happened. So um, he just started telling me, run, we'll talk later, run, just run, we'll talk later. And all I can see, in ahead of me is my daughter and my and my brother-in-law going with my husband, and I'm just looking around, and then we have started hearing gunshots. So I, I, I looked around, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I'm in the middle of nowhere. I don't even know where I am. There's gunshots. And I just I just started running. I didn't know exactly what it was. I didn't know what it was. We then ran to there was another car where everyone stopped. I didn't know where I was. I don't know where I was going. There was, there was gunshots, it was basically we were just running for our life and I didn't know where my husband was, I was just following him. My mother-in-law, I lost her at the time, I didn't know where anyone was. When I entered that house and I saw a flag, I saw a flag and I sort of asked around some women, they spoke very broken Arabic, they didn't really speak, they were sort of surprised I didn't know what was going on, some of them laughed at me. We were all just basically figured out that we just got in con by the by the boys. What was the flag? The flag was the black and white flag that we've seen on the news a couple of times. We knew that that was associated to Syria. When you say the black and white flag, I just want you to be clear yes. if, if it's okay with you. Yeah. What flag did you recognise it as? It was the flag of the Islamic State. And once we left that house, I don't know how many hours because this is very long. Just other things to stop to know from that point. Um, I did get to speak to my husband again and he was explaining to me how he's sorry and he didn't want me, he didn't want to do it to me like this. But basically he had concocted a plan and they just thought it was the right place for us to be and he knew I would, we would have never agreed and we would have never wanted to send our kids there and all this stuff he thought he was doing the right thing. Are you angry at Khaled? I was angry at Khaled but I think my emotions of how Traumatized I am. Maybe have ever have surpassed the anger. Um, just traumatized. I can't even think that far back. Right now I'm just uh, to, uh, I tell you, I'm just thinking of just getting through the day, trying to think of. I'm just if, consumed with anxiety and traumatized. So my so Carl had actually left me when I was nine months pregnant, and he never came home. So I also had to deal with that. It was extremely, extremely, extremely sh shattering. I'm just, yeah. I'm just sorry. He got killed by a plane strike. By a plane strike. I, I'd like to say, I'd like to say it was the hardest time. Of my life. It was a very, very big, hard thing. But everything that happened after it was just more epic. So. From the beginning, the first shock of entering and being in Syria, uh, you'd think that would be the biggest thing, but every event that happened after that only got harder and harder. Uh, when Khaled got killed, um, I was then had to get remarried. 
so I chose somebody that was actually working in the hospital because I thought it's better than the other options. Did you want to remarry? I was uh, forced to remarry. Uh, the other option wasn't pretty. I wasn't going to put myself in a safe house with my children and with those women, with a bunch of women. Um, water, you, I don't know if people know, um, there's no running water, there's no electricity. Um, it's not that easy to go fill up petrol in your car and just turn on your car and go get your groceries. So I wasn't, um, you know, I was forced to cook. Well, yeah, definitely. What was life like living under Islamic State? The fear was always up to here. Got to the point where you'd be sitting down and you can just imagine a wall caving in from behind you. I would just close my eyes and I can see a wall falling, bricks flying, smoke coming in the room. I just wait, um, yeah, just wait for glass to fly. Um, that, that's how I can just I really lived to fear up to here for the last few years. Trying to live a normal life with our friends, you know, we would try to find Big Mac recipes. <laughs> we just really, we really, we really with, between the women, we really just tried to replicate as much as we could at home. So we were just into trying to find something decent to wear, trying to cook, trying to clean. But apart from that, you spend the nights. How do you spell maghsa? What's a maghsa? How do you spend a maghsa? Maghsa. You know when you get nervous and your stomach starts to hurt? So we spend the nights, we hear a plane, we can't go to the toilet, we need to go to the toilet, but you're afraid to move. <laughs> okay? This is how we spend the last four years. In the daytime, like you know how the human nature has to forget and move on with life. So we just try to pretend that we're normal. Try to make Big Mac burgers, try to make chicken nuggets, try to find soy sauce or a replicate and something, try to make Asian food. And then the rest of the time was living in fear. In front of my own eyes, three people got shot in one day. A, a five-year-old girl, that's from my community was shot. Okay, my 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 sister-in-law's sister was shot in the chest, and and um yeah, and somebody and my other my other friend was then shot here. This is all in one day. Okay, and then you have how one's dropping on you, and then you have the AC-130. The I can't even explain explain to you that sound, that sound. You have we have when I left Barros for a month straight, I could hear the sound of bullets still in my ear. I'm walking around doing like this. I'm asking people, can you hear this? Can you hear this? I've been hearing bullets. I'm like, what is it? I'm thinking it's a bird I'm making a noise. They're, they're looking at me like I'm a freak. I'm telling, I can hear bullets. Until I got into this camp one whole month, I'm hearing bullets. In my sleep, I still hear, I still see, I, still, and I feel the pressure. You know, the pressure of a, of a bomb, I don't think anyone can ever understand. The sound of the Russian barrel bomb, no one knows. No one knows. I was just barrels was just something different. Barrels. Running, not running. Actually, when you hear that someone is shooting at you a couple of hundred meters away, and you can't, bling, 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 bling. I could feel the pressure of the bullet flying past me. I have nowhere to hide. There's nowhere for you and your kids to hide. I do not know how we got out in one piece. It was ridiculous and all for what? There was no other way out anyway. There was no way out anyway. For anybody. The Australian government ha has uh, said publicly that they believe some of uh, the people still in Syria may be considered threats. How would you respond to that? I'd like the Australian government to know that we're actually broken. Okay, we're shattered. We are broken people. It's, it's unfair generalisation. It really is. If they want to know anything about us, come and speak to us. Give us a chance. We just want safety for our children. So to say that we would want to go somewhere where we, we need the safety and go and, give, and, and make that place unsafe, for, unsafe it's just doesn't, it's, it's illogical. We're, we're tired, we're broken, we're shattered. We just want normality for our kids. It's not fair. It's not fair for the kids. It's not fair for us. Most of us didn't even come willingly here. We didn't even come willingly. And if they want to know about our character, they can just come and speak to us. Look, I don't know, I haven't read much about the actual charges, but if I'm genuinely innocent, then I should really not be worried because I genuinely didn't intend to break the law or break the law. So 
It was just a woman stuck between a rock and a hard place. I just wants to move on. I just want to move on. I want my kids to move on. I want to give my kids everything. Everything they missed out on. They can, they can be, they have potential. They have potential. I want to give them that. I want to give them, I want to give them, they've lost so much. They've lost so much.